Over the past 25 years, there have been countless Crash Bandicoot games, but it's still the original trilogy on the PS1 that holds a special place in the hearts of many gamers, including myself. That's why it was such a pleasure to see those three games so faithfully remade in the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy a few years back. Now, Toys for Bob, the studio who most recently gave us the Spyro Reignited trilogy, are getting a chance to make their own original game with Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time. Crash 4 is a direct sequel to the original trilogy that ignores all the subsequent sequels, which is definitely for the best as the majority of those games were met with a mixed to poor reception. By the time I'd finished the first world of Crash 4, I knew that I was in for a great game and that Toys for Bob completely understood what made the original trilogy of Crash games so beloved. It's clear that this is a team who cares a lot about this franchise, as Crash 4 so lovingly recaptures the magic of the original games, whilst removing some of the weaker aspects and modernising the formula enough to not make Crash feel like a relic that's trapped in the past. Something the original Crash trilogy has become somewhat known for is its challenging platforming, and with Crash 4, the difficulty remains intact. In fact, I died over 80 times on my first playthrough of the final level, while Crash 4 is often difficult, it's never frustrating thanks to the excellent checkpoints. They're just frequent enough that you never have to replay too much of a level upon dying. Crash 4 offers more varied gameplay than any other Crash game for a couple of reasons. The first being the Quantum Masks. In certain levels, you'll find masks that Crash can equip to get new abilities. There are four Quantum Masks in the game, each giving Crash a new power. These abilities include phasing objects in and out of existence to create new platforms or remove obstacles, slowing down time to avoid hazards or use platforms that would normally be moving too fast, spinning so rapidly that Crash can hover in the air for a few seconds or destroy strong obstacles, or reversing gravity so that Crash can run along the ceiling. The masks are all fun to use and contribute to some of the most exciting and memorable platforming sections of the game. They're also often responsible for some of the most intense moments of gameplay, as you have to rapidly remember to activate and deactivate your ability, all while avoiding the various enemies and traps that Crash 4 throws at you. The other way It's About Time mixes up the gameplay more than any other Crash game is with the introduction of multiple playable characters. All up, there are five playable characters in Crash 4. Each of the main levels offers you the ability to play as Crash or his sister Coco, these two characters have identical movesets, though they each have unique cosmetic skins you can unlock. The other three characters, Dingo Dial, Neo Cortex, and Mysterious Series Newcomer Torna, each have their own dedicated levels, which is necessary because they have their own wholly unique playstyles. All three of these characters feel great to play as, and their levels are some of my favourite parts of the game. Torna has a grappling hook that allows her to quickly zip across the environment to grappling points or detonate nitro and TNT crates safely from a distance. Neo Cortex has a ray gun that allows him to turn enemies into platforms as well as a dash. And my personal favourite, Dingo Dial, has a vacuum gun that lets him suck up crates and barrels and then blast them at opponents. These levels also all take place concurrently to the story of Crash 4 and connect to the main story in neat ways. The original Crash games had vehicle levels. These were usually pretty fun, but by the time we got to Crash 3, I felt like they'd become a little overdone and ended up feeling too gimmicky. Crash 4 avoids falling into this trap by incorporating the vehicle sections into other levels rather than making them their own standalone levels. This helps keep that element of the original games alive without making them feel like they're taking up too much of the overall experience, which I really appreciated. Visually, Crash 4 is an absolute treat. Its vibrant colour palette pairs perfectly with its cartoony art style, and the selection of levels offer a massive amount of variety. Levels are also packed with tiny details that make them pop, and there's more than a few easter eggs to past games scattered throughout the environments. Crash 4 also offers a ridiculous amount of replay value. There's gems to collect, time trials to complete, and tapes to collect that unlock new flashback levels. These flashback levels are bonus levels that offer the game's most gruelling challenges. There's even remixed versions of every level in the game called inverted levels. These have you replay missions with some sort of gimmick added to them. 
For example, some levels might be completely devoid of colour, and by spinning you fling paint across the environment, highlighting your path forward. Or a level might now be played entirely underwater. These are a nice way of offering players more to do in the game after rolling credits on the story. Though a lot of them felt similar enough that I don't feel the need to go back and complete all the inverted levels. Crash Bandicoot 4 is an excellent throwback. It wonderfully balances new and old gameplay concepts in a way that allows it to recapture the feeling of the original Crash trilogy without relying too heavily on nostalgia to innovate on the series in interesting ways. Crash 4 not only lives up to the original trilogy of Crash games, it surpasses them in many ways. If you have any nostalgia for the Crash series, or are even just a fan of platformers, Crash 4 is a must play. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to like and subscribe for more reviews, including my upcoming review of Watch Dogs Legion.